Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to use M wave pi to run a calibration. And so this assumes that you have uh, data that you've measured using a VNA and saved in touchstone uh, file format, which is the standard format for microwave networks. Um, okay, so in this directory, I have four subdirectories. DUT, that directory holds the devices under test, which I, I want to, I'm interested in their response. Uh, and simulation holds the simulator responses for those measured DUTs. The ideals and measured directories, these hold uh, corresponding sets of calibration standards. So when I measured it from the VNA, I measured the calibration standard, I, I store it and measured, and then ideals holds the predicted values of the calibration standards. Now, how, how do you generate the ideals is a, a whole different subject. And uh, traditionally, the, the calibration kit uh, manufacturer will provide you with uh, mm -hmm. definitions for this. Sometimes they're in touchstone files, sometimes they're not, depending on how old the VNA is and such. But um, in any case, I generated these with M wave pi. And I'll cover that in a different tutorial. But let's just look in, uh, let's say, measured for a second. So th this is this example is for a uh, WR 1.5 rectangular waveguide. So that's 500 to 750 gigahertz uh, rectangular waveguide. And so the standards I have are short, uh, a load, and then two delay shorts. So if I use just one of these, this will be a traditional like short open load calibration where the open is a delay short because uh, it's a waveguide. And I'm going to show you how to run a calibration using the, just three standards, or you can use all, all four if you want to. And uh, if you look in ideals, that director, I have the identical uh, identical file names, but, but these are you know, different, different networks. These are ideal responses, which I've calculated actually using in WavePy. OK, so this is uh, just a normal terminal here. I'm going to go into IPython, which you can uh, you can get for Windows too. And so once you're in IPython, you're in the uh, starting from the same point as I am here. And I'm passing in the PyLab flag so I can plot things interactively. Okay, so now I'm in IPython. And now this calibration I'm going to store in a text file because it gets pretty long-winded um, to just type in the terminal by itself. So I'll make a new file here. We'll call this cal.py and save it to the root folder. So it's right there. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is import mwavepy. Call it mv. <coughs> now, uh, in mwavepy, the calibration is accomplished by cr first creating a calibration object and then, uh, you know, applying that calibration using methods of the object. And so you can get help on that object if you want to uh, through this normal help command. And here you can see, uh, it tells you what the initializer takes, and here's an explanation of all the options, and here's a bunch of functions. Um, OK, so we're just going to do the most basic calibration possible. So the, the two arguments you have to pass it is uh, are measured and ideals. Now the measured argument is a list of uh, network objects and the ideal argument is a list of network objects uh, that correspond to the uh, oh man this yeah that correspond to the measured list so that means uh, element 0 of the measured list has to correspond with element 0 of the ideals list and I already explained what the measured and ideals uh, what that means We'll get out of that. Um, okay, so so I'm going to make a calibration object, call it cal calibration, and um, I'm going to break this up because it gets pretty long to write on one line. So as we read in the help here, it takes two things: it takes measured, that's a list of network objects, and also takes ideals. A list of measured ob I mean a list of uh, network objects. Okay, so I'm gonna break this up too over many lines because it is gonna be long too. 
So let's load up the measured, the measured network. So MV network is the constructor for a network type, and you just pass it the touchdown file name. That's how you construct a network in MWave Pi. So this is measured. Oops. Measured. <coughs> let's pull the short out first. S1P. Okay. Now, the first, like I said, the first element of the measured list has to correspond with the first element of the ideals list. And uh, so we'll make sure that happens when we write the ideal list. So we're going to start out with just three standards, three standard calibrations. So I'm just duplicating those lines. Then we'll go and change these names. So short, let's say delay short, 132 micron, I think is what it's called. So you can list it. Uh, measure. You just make sure I <clears throat> typed it right. And make sure uh, you can also just copy copy this line and paste it right in here and make sure it runs and it works correctly and it, uh, give you back a network type. Okay, so that looks to be working. I need to put a load in here. Oops. All right, so here's my list of measured objects. Now, I need to create a list of corresponding ideal network objects. So I'm just going to copy that whole list and then go in here and change this directory. So that's why I named the files identically is because it makes this easier. Okay. All right. So that should run. This should work. So this should return a calibration object type and store it in the, in the name cal. And this actually isn't going to run the calibration. It's just going to set it up for us. So let's make sure we can run this script. So I'm running cal.py, which is the name of this file. And it ran and uh, gave us a warning. So this warning says that you didn't tell it what kind of calibration you want. So it's going to inspect from the measured networks and it's going to use a one port calibration. So that just means since we didn't tell it if it's a one port or two port or whatever, it's going to just do one port and it determined that based on the uh, number of ports in, in the, these network files here. Okay, so that's good. Now we have a calibration, but okay, what do we do with it? Now we want to apply it to some raw measurements and get a, some calibrated responses. That's the whole point. So let's do that. Let's load up some uh, raw measurements. So I'm going to load up the what I have in my DUT folder here, which is a radiating open, and, and that's just the waveguide flange radiating in free space, if you're curious. But okay, I'll make a network type like so. All right. And that'll return a one port network. And now this is just a raw measurement, right? So this is, so I'm going to store this, I'm going to call this radiating open experiment. Uh, or actually, I'll just call it measured, radiating open measured. Or raw or something. You can call it whatever you want to, it doesn't matter. Okay, so radiating open measurement, and that, by that I mean raw measurement, is stored in uh, this name RO underscore mez. So we can plot that and see what it looks like. Plot it in log scale. They just return loss in log scale. <clears throat> so if we look at this, it's a bunch of nonsense. Doesn't mean anything. Okay, and that's because it's raw measurement, as expected. So now let's say we want to apply the calibration to this network object here. So I can do cal, and there's a function called apply cal. You can tab that out. Um, so I want to apply that to, and that takes a network type. And you can, like I said, you can get help on these. So if you want help on this function, it'll tell you. You pass it an input network, and it returns a calibrated measurement, which is a network object too. Okay, so cal apply cal. I'm gonna pass it the measured radiating open. Okay, and that returns a one port network here. So I'm gonna store that now in radiating open underscore uh, cal. Okay, now let's see what that looks like. The so plot return loss again in, in a mag in a log scale and it looks it looks actually close to what I expect it to look like. So that's good. So this is a calibrated measurement. So that's success. So okay, so let's say we wanna if we wanted to not keep typing this, we wanted to just run this uh in this script here. I'm just gonna uh, paste this over here. And then uh I guess I need to here you go, I'll just paste this. Okay, so now it'll just you know automatically do it for us. And let's say I want to, you know, when I run this script, I wanted to run the calibration 
apply it to this thing and then plot the result and I want to do that all in one step so then you can just you know pull up figure and okay so now that I'm starting accessing these commands here these commands come from uh, that plot lib so you need to import those into your script so I'm just going to import everything from that plot lib it's called pylab okay so now this figure command is going to you know be imported here so it's accessible in the script so okay so I'm going to do a radiating open calibrated I'm going to plot the SDB so that's return loss and and a log scale so now when I run it whoops sorry now when I run it uh, should automatically plot it. It didn't because I forgot to forgot to draw and did do this to tell it to show the thing. So okay here. That works. So now let's run it again, make sure it works. Okay, good. So there it is. Now I'll say I want to compare that to uh, my simulation. So we'll make a radiating open uh, we'll make a network called radiating open simulated. construct it in a similar way okay and then I can just I'll just plot it for comparison and I'm gonna put a label on these so you can tell them apart so this is a uh, this is a uh, experiment and this is simulated and I simulate that with HFSS if you're curious. So okay, so now we have uh, the measurement versus the simulated response. So that's good. Okay, so now let's um let's do something. Let's add another standard here. So I told you I measured four standards in it in uh, an M wave pi calibration object. You can you can pass it as many standards as you want to and it'll just implement a least square solution so here I'm just gonna add another delay short that I measured see, 5 it runs long like that and this sh everything should run just the same way and it just gives you a different calibrated response because the calibration is defined differently maybe it's better maybe it's worse you know that's really up to you uh, up to your interpretation or uncertainty analysis if you are interested in that but um okay so that's good so now we have a least squares over determined uh, one port calibration using just arbitrary standards you know and now uh, okay let's say we want to save this calibrated result this you can do that really easily just by uh, that's just a network function so if I want to save RO Cal you just do RO Cal and just do right touch tone and you can pass it a name if you want to or it'll use the name it has so I'm just going to call it Calb RO you'll see it's right here and so you can do that you can calibrate a whole directory of files really easily with this <clears throat> and write them all out at once if you want to uh, now let's say you want to save the uh, error network of the calibration so you might want to do that if you want to apply the calibration to other measurements uh, at a future date or something or if you're interested in the the uh, error network of the calibration itself, which you may uh, that may be interesting if if you're looking at a tiered calibration. So the way we do that is the calibration object has a has a property called error network. Okay. I wonder if this has help in it. That just gives help on that. Okay, so it gives you a so this is a network object that represents the error network of the uh, in this case the VNA but it, it's just whatever is in front of the calibration plane your reference plane so here's the error network and uh, you can plot the S parameters of that too because it's just a network so here's the these are the error network uh, error coefficients of the one port calibration and th these have traditional names like uh, this one would be reflection tracking S21 and then the other ones are return uh, source match and, and directivity <clears throat> so you can you know plot that and save that or you can actually write the error network to disk so you can just like a just like any other network so I'm gonna call this VNA write it to disk now you'll see I have a file here called 
uh, vna.s2p, which I can use uh, in the future to to um, calibrate a response. So just just if you're curious, when when, when I run this uh, apply cal here for one port network, all that's doing is 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 doing the error network inverse s parameters cascaded with the raw measurement. That's it. And so these are the inverse S parameters. That, that's a property of a network type. And then, and then this double dot, the power in Python, I've overloaded to, to implement cascading. So what you want to do is cascade the inverse error network with the measurement to get the calibrated response. So if we take that, and let's just store that real quick, and in, in we'll call this ROCAL2. Okay, then let's plot that magnitude again. And you'll see it's the same. So that's good. I'm just illustrating how that calibration is applied. And that's just for a one port. For two ports, a little bit different. Um, well, okay, that's about it. Um, I'm going to cover a, a two port calibration at a later time, but hopefully, this is enough to <clears throat> illustrate how to use this in WavePy for a one port calibrations and how to apply those and save your calibrated data and stuff. Um, I hope it was useful.